Hello and welcome to today's lesson. I'm your hard-working but indefatigable teacher, Mr. Burton. You will need to watch this video and take notes as you go. You may need to watch certain parts of the video a few times to ensure complete understanding. This is your homework and I will check your notes tomorrow before we get started. I hope you learned something. Okay, hello and welcome to today's lesson. Today we're focusing on balancing ledger account. It's just a short lesson, short, sharp, sweet, um, and just really tidying up the ledger account work that we've done over the last two days. Balancing a ledger account. All right, here goes the ledger account name bank. It starts with the March 1st balance, and across the course of a week, um, there are three separate transactions, one inv involving accounts receivable, the other accounts payable, and um, shop fittings. So the first step to balancing ledger account is that you add both sides of the account, so the debit side and the credit side, and that's going to tell you the nature of the balance. So the largest side, if the largest side is the debit side, then the balance will be a debit side. If the largest side is a credit side, then it will be a credit side. Okay, so we're adding up these two sides. Um, the first side, the uh, debit side, 9,000 plus 2,750 gives a grand total of 11,750. On the credit side, you can see it's much less. Those two transactions total 3,200. First step done. Second step, we're gonna find the difference between the two sides. 11,750 subtract 3,200 and the difference is our balance. So the, that's 8,550. The difference between the debit and credit side will be the balance. Now step three, enter the balance in the account on the side with a smaller total. So in the case of the bank, this is gonna be the credit side and that's gonna make both sides balance. Both sides will now total the same amount. The date used is usually the last of the month. Um, this is when the balancing is typically carried out. But just for simplicity's sake and a few transactions here, we're just going to use the end of the week. Fourth step, you can see it's very step by step. You need to write these steps down, practice them, remember them. Now we're going to total both sides. They should now have the same total. And the next step is to transfer the closing balance down to the opposite side so that when the account is open for the next week's transaction or the next month's transaction, the next day's date is normally used. And this is exactly what it looks like. Simple. Four steps, step by step by step by step and we have a nice tidy balance ledger account. Now just a note, the totals appear on the same line and are underlined twice with dollar signs in front of each figure. And since the bank account is an asset, when we open the next balance for the next week or the next month as we typically do, it's going to appear on the debit side of that ledger account. Super simple, super fast. I hope you've got it. Those four steps, write them down, practice them, remember them. Thanks. One more thing. If there's just one number, so the account, nothing has, um, nothing's been done in those accounts over the course of the time period, usually a month, we do nothing. It doesn't involve a balance. Just a balance, do nothing. Leave it as it is. So, one number, do nothing. That's the rule. So if there's a, one account starts with a balance and no transactions at all during that period, we leave it. If it's a new account, there was no balance to start with and um, 
we just enter one transaction the one number that's the rule we do nothing we just leave it as it is leave it as it is with one number okay that's it